Hello guys, my name is Mimi Kesa. I'm an instructor at Futureless Space. And today I'm going to give you an introduction to SideFX Houdini software. So what is Houdini? Houdini is a powerful software that allows users to create super complex models in a very short amount of time. It focuses mainly on procedural modeling and it, this feature distinguishes it from other 3D softwares or 3D computer graphics programs. It is a dream software for FX departments, but in recent years, architects have also become interested in it because you can create, uh, you're not going to uh, model a pretty basic thing, or better said, uh, it's not a straightforward modeling software. It's more of a, you are not just modeling a model, but you're also modeling the process. So. That's what it, uh, what procedural modeling means. So you are not you don't have to think about how the model will look, but you also have to think about the process. What kind of a uh, points you have to be uh, you have to do in order to create something. And this is uh, this is a really big deal because you are in control of in any part of your modeling process, and you can change everything according you to your needs and you also can replace every input or output and this kind of stuff so that's one of the reasons why i'm i was interested in houdini at first and from then on i started to use houdini in any different field and yeah so that's basically it and now let's dive inside houdini and I'm going to explain how Houdini works and what kind of, uh, uh, how the interface works. For example, this is the interface that I see now because I changed it, changed it according to my needs. And every interface over this, this kind of, the name of this interface is a desktop because Houdini structure works as a basic Windows Windows desktop or with all its folders and stuff like that. And you can always change this appearance based on your needs. For example, let's change it back to, uh, let's change it back to the default. I'm going to explain every step here. So when you open Houdini, you might uh, get a display like this, or better said, a desktop like this, with three main windows, and so on and so forth. And as you, can, as you saw, I, when you look here on dividers between these tabs, there are always these arrows and these dot, dot lines. So when you click one of uh, on one of these arrow, uh, arrows, you can collapse one tab or open it. What you can also do is when you click and uh, click click to the dot dot icon here, you can switch these two, or the, uh, you can switch tabs. What you can also do is you can go here on this arrow. You can split, um, for example, this one and create two different tabs, like on the right side, and assign with plus sign here different tabs as you need. What you can also do is you can also, for example, here, you can go up on this menu bar, and here you can see different, different setups, desktop setups. And you can also, if you change the desktop, you can also save the desktop as a new desktop. And you can always switch in between. Build is mo most of the time the default one. And for example, you can change it to games. Let's wait a little bit. It changed the whole look into a game workflow setup or desktop or you can always switch it back 
So I always like to work in this environment where I have the scene view and this network editor. I collapse the parameter editor and by pressing P, the parameter editor will be inside this network editor. So if you create, for example, let's create a geometry node, you will have the parameter editor here. So let me go ahead and explain this individual tabs and also the shelves a little bit more. So on the left, you see the scene view. And inside scene view, uh, you can see the geometry that you create created. And this scene view has also different uh, options. On the left, you can see the select options on the top. And if your icon, for example, has an arrow on top of it, you can right click on top of this icon and you will see all these options for this particular um, icon. And as you can see, there are many different uh, select uh, object select modes, geometry select modes, and also dynamic select mode. Then down below, you have the handles. There's the select handle, move, uh, rotate, and also scale. And if you, for example, go on top of an icon and hold a little bit, you can also see what kind of an icon it, that is, and also the hotkey for that icon. And down below, you also have this handle. And this handle is node-based, so each node has different options. And when you, for example, change something based on your needs, you can just select a component and then activate this handle, then you can do the changes. But we are going to see it when we uh, actually create something here. So we will talk about it later. Then here you have all the snap options and also the view tools. On the right, you have display options. So for example, here on top, you have the plane. You can activate or deactivate it and other kind of display options like show points, display points, display normals, point trails, and so on and so forth. On the right here, you can also change the view to pers from perspective to top, front, and, and so on and so on. And here you can also change the shading style and other kind of stuff. From perspective, you can change it to orthographic and from orthographic to perspective again. On the right, you have got different camera options. When your scene has an option, a uh, camera, you can change the camera stuff here or select your camera. Here, you also have all these options from, for example, again, shading styles. Again, shading styles. Uh, this one is, uh, for example, if you have more objects here, or better said, geometry nodes or networks, uh, and if you dive inside here, you will see the other object. So let me show you real quick. Let's create two geometry networks. I'm going to create here a sphere. You don't have to do this part. It's only for demonstration. Here a cube. And as you can see, when I dive inside here, I only have my cube inside here, but you will also see the sphere from the other object because you highlighted it. And in order to not see this, you can just go here and hide other objects. So this icon is for that. And then viewport layout, so you can also change the viewport layout to a different kind of views, four views, two views, and so on and so forth. So this is mainly it. On the right, you have um, the network editor here and the parameter editor here. On default, it's like this. So we have this window here. And Houdini's interface is based on networks. So we have different networks. For example, here we have our geometry network because we are going to create some objects. So we are in object network here. So if you go to this tab or this bar here and click on top of it, 
you will see other networks as well. So if you are working with audio files and stuff like that, you have to be in channel network. If you work with images, you have to be in image network. And since we are going to create shapes and most of the case, we are going to create shapes or as a designer or an architect, our main focus is on creating geometries. So we have to be in this object network. And here you can exactly create this geometry networks by uh, clicking either right click on your mouse or the tab button. You can open this tab menu and just type in geometry. And this way you can create this geometry network. And when you do this and select the geometry node here, you will see immediately all the options in your parameter editor that you can change. Now let's change the name to introduction. Sorry, introduction. I didn't mean to write intro function. <laughs> okay, let's carry on to the shelves. Here you have got different shelves. So for example, on the live, on the left, there are stuff for creation. Uh, so creating objects, for example, if you wanna create a box, you can just cl click on the box then um, put your box anywhere you want and it immediately creates this box object, geometry object here. What you can also do is you can uh, click on control and then click on box and it automatically creates the box in the middle of your scene. But I'm, I never use shelves for this kind of stuff. I mostly create all the objects on my own. Because on the right, you also have this pre-made uh, simulations from particle flows, fluids, rigid bodies, oceans, and all this kind of stuff are here. So they are all pre-made. So if you have a, if you need a, for example, if you wanna create uh, some pyro source or pyro effects, you can just create one here and just look at the structure, how it is built, then go ahead and build your own because it's most of the time better to create your own simulations because it kind of gives you more control over it. So I never use these this, uh, shelves for that. I only use them to kind of get to know a certain workflow. And here on the slides and cameras, you have different cameras from normal camera here to stereo camera, VR camera, and other kind of things. Okay, let's, uh, I think that's it. Uh, oh, the last thing is down below you have the timeline. Here you can animate your simulations or you can kind of just simulate your simulations. <laughs> And you have got different options from, for example, real-time toggle, you can activate this one. And on the right side, you also got different options from, um, for example, here you can change it to, for example, manual, not auto updates your simulation or your notes and these kind of stuff. Okay, let's dive inside our geometry network. So as you can see, you can always, like in a desktop, you can just open a folder and then create more stuff inside it. And as you can see here on this tab, you immediately, immediately see, this tab is also here on the scene view. Uh, you see um, that you are inside this geometry network, which means the introduction network that we created. So you can always click to OBJ here and dive uh, uh, out or double click on the geometry network and dive in. And also in, in this tab where the scene view is, you can also open different kind of stuff from animation editor to render view, composite view, motion effects view to geometry spreadsheet. From all of this, especially when you're working with geometries and creating geometries, 
geometry spreadsheet is pretty important because you can kind of see what's inside of your or what of what kind of uh, attributes or what kind of uh, elements are inside of your net node and this is really helpful to move forward for you so let's go ahead and create a geometry i'm going to create a circle as a start and as you can see it immediately creates this circle here and for example if you select this node and activate handle you immediately see the transform handle because this node has transform options for this particular geometry so the handle will be a transform handle as well so you can change um, the whole geometry here with the transform or with this handle as well and with escape you can kind of escape this handle and activate view tool again because this is really important here so if you want to rotate the view you can just left click and rotate around with middle mouse click you can move the view and with right click you can zoom in or zoom out but when you activate a handle you can't do that because all this left right and middle mouse click are here for different kind of options so in order to view your objects or kind of rotate your view you have to click alt or yeah you have to click alt and then you can just rotate the view with middle mouse click alt middle mouse click alt sorry alt left click alt middle mouse click is for moving the view and alt alt right click is for zoom in zoom out so in order to move freely you just have to click escape here in order to deactivate this to a handle or you can just go ahead and click the view here to deactivate the handle and activate the view too so now you are free you are free to free bar to move or rotate or zoom in zoom out freely without without alt key so let's set all these values to default again and i'm going to change the orientation here because here now in parameter data you can change everything what you want to zx for example lay it down and also the primitive type we don't want to work with primitives we want to work with polygons and i'm going to close the arc or sorry open the arc and make it like 180 and i'm going also i'm going also going to decrease the divisions so let me also show you another options for display for example if you click b you can open the display options and inside here we can for example go to background tab and change the color scheme to dark and there are also a lot of options for display especially when you are working with he heavy um, meshes or geometries you can go to optimize and limit the polygon limit to much smaller number and other kind of stuff you can go to scene change stuff in scene in visualization or geometry tab you can change the point sizes wireframe how thick should be the wireframe and these kind of stuff and then at the end you can save as default or just escape or close the window so if you want to work procedurally i wouldn't recommend you to change anything here inside this basic geometry network or node sorry but for changing a geometry there is this node called transform and you can now change everything here for example from translation to scale or to rotation so this is pretty important because for a procedure workflow if you change for example the input 
all the process that you created should work for this new input as well. So you don't have to change the input in self again. That's why you don't you have to leave this start in start node alone and and make the changes with a transform. So this will be your main input for the base geometry. And after that, so if you replace it, every change that your process makes for the for this base object will be always the same. So you don't have you don't have to change the input. But I, I'm going to use a different type of transform here. But I'm going to use a copy and transform. This is also a pretty useful node because with this node you can, for example, say I'm, I want to have five copies with a translation of 0 0.2 and with a rotation of 90 in y axis, for example. But you don't have, you don't see anything here right now. So in order to see the changes, you have to set the display flag on this node that you want to see. So you can do this by going to the node and selecting this display option here or button here. And now you can see the changes, what this node does to this circle node. And there are, for example, different options. For example, the template. Template is for, for example, if you want to see, let's go activate this one or display this one. And if you want to only see the template of this node, you can activate the template flag here. And you see the template flag in a, in a thinner line or only the wireframe, for example, if this was closed, for example, you will see the template only the frame or better set the wireframe. Let's open it again. So this is um, for a template. And there are other options for, for example, for bypass. If I transform my circle in between this copy node here, if a rotation here, as you can see, you'll see in real time that it changes the whole structure of the copy node. I'm going to display this one. And in order to ignore this change here, we can just click Bypass and it, it ignores this transform node and deactivates it. And as you can see in Houdini, in a procedural workflow, when you deactivate a node, the whole process uh, will still go on. It just bypass or ignores this node and goes to the next one. So there's this, for example, for all the users of Grasshopper may know if you deactivate one node, or one component, uh, then the whole script afterwards will not work. So this is the main difference of a procedural workflow. So let's, and there's also other option called lock. With lock, you can just lock this um, component. Especially this is important for simulations. If you change something of your base structure, for example, and the simulation changes uh, on this based uh, on this node, for example, the whole structure, you can just lock it. And then if you change the input again, it ignores all the changes, for example. So I'm going to delete this one. And I'm going to change this to something like 20. And I'm going to change that to one and also the scale to scale also a little bit. And I also may change this as well. So you can play around with this. So, Let's go ahead and create a skin node and a polyloft node. 
so there are if you have lines like this that are aligned on a certain level you can loft this out like in any kind of software with a poly loft for example you can do that but what you can also use is a skin these two components or nodes work pretty similar but for example in polyloft you don't have that much options polyloft functions most of the time pretty well but since there are not that many options skin is much more useful in our case because you can go to the connectivity for example now this isn't a wireframe it just folds the face that's why it looks like this but we are for example as connectivity we are using qu uh, quadrilateral sorry i can't pronounce that but you can also go to triangles now we have triangles you can only output the columns or only the rows or rows and columns and all this stuff and this is pretty useful in most of the cases going to make it a little bit more crazier yeah this one maybe I also change the divisions and for example if you go to the node you also have this info here node info this node info gives you all this info about the spec or specific node that you want to check out with all those points inside primitives inside words inside and polygons inside where is the center uh, what is the minimum point maximum point and the main size of the bounding box and houdini also works with attributes and groups that i'm going to talk more about now from now on I'm going to use the skin for now and there is this node called scatter and with scatter you can populate this geometry with points you can change the total count of this population but you can also use for example attributes to do a certain uh, certain stuff on this population option here so this is um, a very important part let me just put it a little bit higher here because in houdini as i said we work with attributes which means you have to create attributes in order to do a certain uh, manipulation or, or a certain addition or subtraction of our, of your process so which means for example we can create a color attribute by going to a point for example i'm going i'm going to use a point attribute here so you have got different attribute options for example here when you go to this node you can just connect it to a skin and here you have to define attribute class for example you can create a detail primitive point or vertices attributes and most of the time we are dealing with two attribute classes points and primitives and for example you can create a point attribute here and you can change the position or you can see what kind of attributes there are or you can change the color let's activate this point and let's see what this color does and this component when you create a uh, attribute base uh, with this component you can see there are you have to use vex uh, vex is a scripting language for uh, houdini which is mainly based on vectors so vector expression or yeah something like this and you can go to this handle here or better said sorry on this icon here 
and you can use for example a pre-made uh, expression for example random and as you can see it assigns random color attribute on each point you can also go ahead and say okay I want to use at p so the point attribute so if you go to the info you can see there are two attributes now the point attribute and the color attribute and what happens when you use uh, this expression so the point attribute as an input as uh, here you will see uh, that the point positions will also be my color attribute so if you now go to the geometry spreadsheet you can check out also all the attributes in detail for example if you can go to the skin activate the skin you can see here inside info box you see we only have one attribute which is the point attribute and you can see all these values here based on the point number and in info box uh, this attribute is a free float position attribute which means it has three values so it, it, that makes it a vector attribute and here when you now activate the point where we also created this color attribute based on our points so if you want to kind of use an attribute inside the expression you always have to use at and then the attribute name and here you can see all these points values will be assigned to the color values as well because color has also three values now let's go ahead and change this for example spherify p or you have different kind of options here to do that or you can just say if you just want to use for example only this value of your point positions or only the y value you can also go ahead and uh, just use at p and with dot you will then x uh, you will then have access to each part of this attribute or each column of this uh, attribute so now you, you just have to give give the name of the second value for example y so i just want to use the y position here and if you now go to the scene view and activate this one you will see it just does that so now when you connect this point value here or point node with this scatter node all these points will also get this colors color attribute as well but what it also gets is you can activate this one so density attribute so you can also change the density of this population based on the color so you can now go ahead and type in here the at or better said only cd only the name and as you can see based on the color values the density of my structure changes as well what you can also do is you can just say one plus py or, or you can also go minus one as you can see i just moved it upwards and stuff like that so you can also use mathematical uh, stuff in there as well and in order to connect these points with lines what i want to show you now is you can go ahead and use connectivity or connect adjacent pieces And as you can see, I will get immediately a warning here. So uh, you have to change the connection type here because we are connecting uh, not, not primitives or something like that because the connection type is now set to adjacent pieces from points. 
but we are since we are connecting only points, we have to change this connection type to adjacent points. The warning is still here because on some parts, it, it doesn't find any connection because the search radius is too small. So you can go up with this one. But most of the time, when you when you display it and it works, you can just ignore the uh, ignore the warning because it always on some points it doesn't work and that's why it gives you this error. I'm also going down with this value to five or something like that in order to get this. So this is uh, how you can uh, use attributes in order to create uh, something or in order to achieve something inside your process. And again, you can also use different kind of stuff here. For example, you can also create normals by using normal component. And you can then display the normals with this icon here. And you will see all these normals. But what I want to create is I don't want to create vertices normals. I want to create point normals. And as you can see on each point, we will have this normal here. And then I want to use this normal in order to paint the whole thing. So you can go now here, you can also give in, okay, I just want to use normal. Let's see what it does. So you can also color the whole thing based on the normal or only normal uh, X direction, for example. And you can also scatter the points based on that, for example. And I'm also going to change it to 1000. Or you can directly change the density attributes to normal here. It does exactly the same thing. So you can also select this here as well. Let's deactivate the display here. So this is also a way to change the whole density. So I'm going to give an expression class 0.1 in order to bring it a little bit down below. Something like this. Yeah. And here on scatter, I think I'm going to use 1,000, 1,000, 1,500, something like this, yeah. Let's also go up with this number, to six, and also search radius to three. Yeah. So I'm also going to show you how you can work with groups as well. So groups are pretty important inside Houdini as well, because you can use uh, groups in order to really specifically choose a part of a geometry and change that part. So let me just show you how this works. For example, if you go to tab menu and create this group node, you can connect this group node to this. Um, connect adjacent pieces node here, activate this. As you can see, you now selected all the primitives inside this um, node. So you can change the group name to, for example, selection. You can change the group type to points, then you, can, you will immediately see it only selected the points of this geometry. And here in this base group, you can just type in point numbers, for example, zero. It only selects now the zero point. 
can see it now it's here you can also sort the point numbers out with a sort node first and say point sort by y then the zero will be down here so uh, if you go here you can display the point numbers so the sort sorting of this point numbers will based on the height so this is you can also change the point sort options to many different stuff from attribute also so you can also change the point sort to at, by attribute again if you select this you can just give in the number or for example the color should 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 be used to sort through point um, numbers and these kind of stuff as you can see now i selected zero and the zero is here somewhere and you can type in different numbers so this works like this what you can also do is you can select this go to base group and if you go this one this icon you can now select by yourself so with left mouse click hold it and with shift you can select more points and if you press enter now you will immediately see all these numbers that you selected point numbers that you selected and this is pretty useful because now if i go and create a transform node so most of these nodes that are based on surface operations or better said some surface manipulations or geometry manipulations are called sops so this is a transform sop this is a group sop sort sop connection connect edges and beast the pieces SOP. So SOP stands for surface operators. So this means all the surface operators also have this tab or this parameter where, it, where, it, where you can assign a group. So what this group does is you can now assign the selection that we created here. And now this transform node only works for this group which means if i tr activate this one now and for example we'll change the translation only the selected part will be changed or only the selected part of the geometry will be changed and if you go for example to the info box here you will also see the point groups uh, which with this selection group and this selection group uh, contains 306 points for example so this is also a pretty useful thing so now i'm going to show you how you can use group groups in order to create uh, create something so let's go ahead and create a group i'm going to change the name by double click on this node name and also change the group name to start as well group type should be points now connect this one with this with this one activate it and now i'm going to select only the points down below here then you can there are also different kind of nodes in order to create uh, groups for example group um, by range as well I'm going to change the name to end and also change it here as well. And here you can, uh, we also have to change group type to points because these two has to be the same. And I'm, I'm also only going to select one of two. So there, uh, now I'm going to use a find shortest path component. And if you have this kind of a geometry with these lines, you can kind of calculate the shortest path on cert from certain points to certain points. So my start points are down below here, and these are all my, all my end points. And I want to uh, calculate, or better said, I want to see all this shortest path between the start and end points. So 
For that, you have to create this find shortest path. And as you can see, I displayed it. It doesn't work yet because we have to assign the groups. For start points, I want to have this start group. For end points, I want to have this end group. And here we have also have to change the output paths from, uh, from any start to each end. And now it calculated all this possible shortest paths between my start points and my end points. And this only works with uh, geometries like this, which means you have to have primitives as lines, as polylines. So if I, for example, only connect the scatter points to my start, it, it, it won't work because it wouldn't have any primitives to search from. So it uses all this geometry here in order to find the path. Now you can add a resample and resample all these lines here. And as you can see, we have got a lot of um, overlapping lines. So I'm also going to smooth them out. And now we have something like this. So this is how a procedure workflow works. So you have a base geometry here. Then you do an operation here, a basic operation, a start operation. And then you create attributes, and based, based on these attributes, you do further manipulations, or better said, further assignments. And at the end, you create something out of it. So from this geometry here, we kind of created this. And now, when you go ahead and replace this, for example, with, I don't know, with a curve. Oh, sorry. For example, if you replace this with a grid, the grid looks like this. Now I'm pretty curious how this will look. Now this won't work. I'm just showing you a little extra. And you can, the problem is we have a face here, it's not open, so we have to open it with ends component. You can open closed uh, primitives. So close you, you can open it with this. So you will only get this, so the last bit will be saved. And this is also a primitive inside Houdini, and this is also a primitive. The only difference is this is a polyline uh, opened primitive or open primitive and this is a poly a closed primitive so now i'm going to use this one so it's the same process with this one it uses the same process but it will give me a different output so i think it won't work because we don't have enough points so you can also go ahead and subdivide it before as well, the subdivide node. And you also have to, I'm going to give a high number here. So this will work with this one as well. So I'm also going to use the subdivide with this as well. Yeah. But what also makes this procedure workflow pretty useful is you can also create controllers. So you can add a null. Um, oops. So right click null. And this uh, empty container with no option or nothing or an empty node. So this helps you to really create your own node. On default, this will look like this. Sorry, I changed it. This is something like this. 
So I just changed the look of the node as well. So you can also change the look of the nodes by your preference as well, by selecting the node, going to this icon here, you can select the shape and by selecting, you can cl click control and select the shape. And this shape will then be uh, like that. So this saves. So when you click control and select the shape, it will be saved. So I'm going to go, you, you can do the same thing with this icon here and change the color of this node as well. But you can do this to any kind of component. So you, I'm going to change the name to controller. And here you have got nothing in here for now. So uh, now let's go ahead to edit parameter interface. And here you can change the interface of this specific um, parameter as well. So you can add different kind of channels or different kind of options here or parameters. So first of all, I want to create an integer. So you can just go to the integer and place it here. And I'm going to create three vector floats. And for example, here, I'm going to change the, you can just select this newly created parameter and change the name to, for example, division. You can, you also have to change the division label as well. You can change the range. I'm going to change it to transform. Change the label to transform as well. Rotation. And scale. Accept. And now I have all these parameters here. So the reason why I did this is I want to have controls here. So I, so I don't have to go every time when I want to change something inside this node and change it, I want to ha have them all here. So in order to do that, you can also reference this parameter to this option as well. So in order to do that, you have to go inside controller, go to this name or to this number. In this case, when you have three values for each parameter, you kind of have to go to this, to the, to the name. So I'm going to use, I'm going to copy all these parameters inside this parameter. So right click and copy parameter. And then you can go to the nodes that you want to reference this parameter. Go to the name as well, right click and pass relative reference. And as you can see, it immediately changed the stuff or better said it referenced. So now it kind of created this expression inside this, which means it's a reference to this parameter here. So if you change this now, it will also change according to that. And as you can see, by changing it, all this process will be we calculated and changed as well. So you can do the same thing with rotation. So right click, copy parameter, go to copy node, right click on rotate, pass relative reference. Now you can also change here all these values as well. So you can also check it out here. And at the end, I'm going to copy this time, for example, you can also 
do it with only the certain parameters here by right click on top of this one copy parameter and you can also reference it like this as well so only this one option but i'm going to do the same thing here as well And lastly, I'm going to also, I'm going to copy this parameter and paste it here. So you can also change the parameters by not only with the slider or typing in the number. You can also change the values by middle mouse click on top of the number. You have different type of options here. So this is, for example, an integer, which means you, I only have one as the smallest option here. And here, this is a float, which means I also have dot, dot numbers. So this goes, for example, the smallest number is 0, 0.0001. So you, with middle mouse click, you can also change these values as well. So this is a way to kind of create this procedural workflow. So thank you for listening to me for this long. So this was an introduction to Houdini. So I will I try to cover everything up, but inside the courses that I give, I will dive much more into all these ideas inside Houdini. So this was only a crash course. I hope we will meet in a, in one of my course in the future.